Well, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Summer's over. Goodbye, son. Hello, school. And we're only left now with summer memories. I'm the revolutionary Simply Kish, and I'm here to give you the only thing better than summer memories. And that is summer music. Many vie to be the summer king or queen of the summer season, but only one can survive. You can make playlists among playlists with the amount of songs we had this past season, and I'm here to give you the five best songs that stood above the rest. So without further ado, here is the top five summer hits of 2015. Number five. This is Taylor's world. We're just living in it. Cause baby, now we got bad blood. You know what you this song could have been released on the 30th of February or the 6th week of December and by pure star power alone, this song would have been the hit of any summer. However, I have to admit, and I'm probably going to get a lot of backlash for saying this, of the post-country tea swizzle that we have in our midst today, this is, without a question, her weakest hit to date. What Taylor Swift lacked in lyrical content, Kendrick Lamar did not lack. The way I see this song, it's Bad Blood by Kendrick Lamar featuring Taylor Swift, not the other way around. The version that has him absent is very forgettable. I'm not speaking anything ill of Tay Tay. She's still the biggest name in the music industry to this day, but for this song, for this summer, Kendrick Lamar. Bad Blood by Kendrick, Bad Blood by Taylor, I don't know, I don't care, except I do. Still a good summer song. Number 4. There's a quote hanging out there made famous by a popular book series that goes along the lines of, Do not pity the dead, pity the living. A more appropriate quote, Do not pity the dead, pity the living who can't make a living. Off the dead. When the dust settled and all was said and done, Charlie Puth and Wiz Khalifa with See You Again stood monumentally at the top of the Billboard charts for 12 weeks. That is three months. The only problem? It was the wrong three months. This song started to gain momentum in the April May months of the year, really reaching its peak at the beginning of summer. That's why a lot of music critics and reviewers, myself included, prematurely lauded this song as the summer hit of 2015. It was an easy, safe pick, and if this song was released a month later, we'd be humming along to a different list with this song as its rightful king. In my previous review, I alluded to the question, can this song stand alone without the emotional ties that it has? to Paul Walker, and now I can comfortably and justifiably say, no, this song cannot stand alone without the emotional ties to Paul Walker. It couldn't even last the summer of 2015 without the emotional ties to Paul Walker. This song's reign ended too fast, too furious, am I right? Nonetheless, while this funeral anthem is slowly dying its death right before our ears, I have to give credit to the song that dominated the first half of summer. Until next time then, Wiz and Charlie, I'll see you again, except not on this song. <laughs> because I was right, you were wrong. Summertime, summertime, summertime. Number 3. DJs have been garnishing more and more attention these past several years, and have become synonymous with some of the bigger names in the music industry out there. In the past, DJs and producers would only really collaborate with another big artist to vocalize over their tracks. Apparently, it's now a trend to collaborate with each other along with a vocalist, team up their powers, and create some sort of mega hit. With so much star power teaming up on a single song, it's almost understandable how this next one was able to slip through the cracks. This is the biggest song this summer, no no no, the biggest song this year that no one knows the title to, no one can name any of the artists on the song, but as soon as you press play, everyone gets down. 
I've heard this song all summer, and I'm talking about this song right now, and I still don't even know who's on it. Lean On by Major Lazer? Major Lazer? DJ Snake. Turn down for what? Mo. Ma? M Delta? Ma. This song is so captivating, so entrenching. This song just had it. DJ Snake's post-chorus hook was catchy and enticing. Mo's vocal deliverance was a sheer display of perfection. But what sealed the deal for me for this song was the astounding construction done by one major laser. Two major laser? I don't know if that's a stage name or a collective of... As a famous Bill Withers once said, we all need somebody to lean on. So Major Laser, DJ Snake, and Ma, I'm tapping you in. Keep EDMing and keep leaning on. Doesn't even make any sense. Number two. Before summer started, I went on several social media blogs and websites to anticipate some of the potential big hits this summer. Some were boring picks, some were daring picks, but only one site had the following song as one of their picks. I pressed play, I heard it, I liked it, and I knew that I was going to go on my summer playlist for this year, but I thought it was laughable to think that I'd be well received in the public's eyes. But here I sit, three months later, eating my words. There is not a single song I heard more times this summer than Omi's Cheerleader. I was talking to one of my friends about this song, and he complained that the lyrics were, to put it gently, cheesy. But here's the thing, Omi's not trying to be a lyrical genius. Sometimes it is as simple as, do you think I'm pretty? <laughs> no, not really. This song was meant to deliver feel-good vibes and liven up the mood, and this song does exactly that. Yes, the rhymes could have been better. Yes, the music could have been more complex. But I think it's about time that the term cheerleader isn't being used synonymously to describe your stereotypical high school snotty princess villain, either conniving or ditzy, who runs the schoolyard with her good looks and type A personality. And that's coming from someone who was a band geek in high school. I also just want to mention that this is the first song since R. Kelly's Ignition, where not only the remix outshined the original, I don't think anyone even knows how the original even sounds like. The song was out for two years before he agreed to remix it. Do you know what that means? Omi decided to sell out before he even got big. I like it. That's something that I could cheer for. Before we get to the big reveal, why don't we go ahead with a couple of honorable mentions for this year. Give it to me, I'm worth it. Not the biggest song of the summer, but by far the most consistent. Had the song been able to find a way to sneak itself into the top 5 or even the top 10 on the Billboard charts, I might have been able to find a way to justify its existence on this list. Because I can, that's why. Anyway, I think I got my point across. So, that number one song we're talking about, let's get down to it. Number one. I read a few sources that claim that there is no one song that truly dominated this year's summer season. We had no Fancy Izzy, or a Blurry Robin, or even a Carly Maybe. All of these songs, in addition to being inescapable that year, was backed up by a star personality singing those lyrics. Cheerleader had the airplay, but it didn't have that star power to fully push it to the top. Omi was not the most dominating artist this summer. Not by a long shot. Without question, this summer belonged to the weekend. Never mind the fact that since it's summer, every day technically felt like a weekend, but, but that's beside the point. I've been driving for quite some time now, and when I'm driving, I like to flip through the stations. And we all know the feeling when a song is playing simultaneously on two different stations. But this summer, I experienced a different sensation. 
This past summer was the first time I was flipping through my radio station and heard the same artist on four different stations playing four different songs. And of course, leading that pack was Can't Feel My Face. Little backstory, I've actually hated The Weeknd for a long time now. Or rather, last year, when he got his big breakthrough success, when he was just an up-and-coming artist, leeching on to the talents of fellow up-and-coming artist Ariana Grande on their hit single, Love Me Harder. If leeching on to a successful artist wasn't good enough, for good measures, why don't we just go ahead and leech on to a successful book franchise turning into a movie, just to be safe. You see, I have pretty good experiences with weekends. Weekends are always my favorite part of the week. I'm a pretty good fan of Vampire Weekend. And as you know, one of my favorite Neon Tree song, as well as one of my favorite summer songs of all times, is called Weekend. Instead, I got this douchebag with the hair. I Can't Feel My Face is arguably one of the stupidest lines I've ever heard in the song, and quite possibly one of the stupidest songs of the year. Which is quite a shame because I really do like the lyrical flow and the melody behind the verses and kind of the pre-chorus. But that hook? S-T-U-P-I-D. But you know what's not stupid? Being an internationally recognized global musical figure who rules the industry charts with a snap of his fingers. Can't feel my face? Mr. The Weeknd? Your summer song of 2015. So, what'd you guys think of my list? Let me know in the comments below. Is there a song I missed or did your song not make it? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I was Simply Kish, but now I'm gone. Fetty Wap is another artist that was pretty dominant during the summer, and he, rightfully so, was a contender for Artist of the Season, but he just... No. Learn how to count. It's six, seven, eight, nine. Baby, I will not go your way. And please, please tell me, what the heck is a trap queen?